If you enjoy the outdoors, the first thing you might notice is the types of trees around you. While deciduous or leaf-bearing trees dominate in the south, the mighty coniferous or cone-bearing trees mask the landscape of the north. The different species are a result of climatic differences, seasonal changes, soil types, and glacial history. The dominant forest type in the north is the boreal forest, which is made up of species such as jack pine, black spruce, white spruce, and poplar. Most deciduous trees found in the north are considered pioneer species, establishing quickly on a disturbed site. However, through succession, these trees will eventually become replaced with conifers. One of the biggest differences between the north and south is who owns the land. Southern Ontario has mostly small forests, owned privately by individuals. As you head north, most of the forest is on Crown land. Crown land is public land, which means the forest is owned by you and me. Crown forests are managed according to provincial laws and regulations. In Ontario, for example, the Crown Forest Sustainability Act is the guiding legislation for forest management. On private woodlots in the south, we rely on landowners to make responsible decisions about how they manage their forests. While these forests are not public, they benefit everyone by cleaning the air and water, providing habitat for animals, and making the landscape more beautiful. It's important to encourage good stewardship through incentives and outreach. Northern Ontario communities are dependent on the natural resource industries such as forestry and mining. Pulp, the material used to make paper, is one of the main products coming from Northern Ontario forests. Southern Ontario also has a strong forest industry, but the products often have a different end use. Most likely, some of the furniture in your house is made from high quality wood such as the maple and oak found in Southern Ontario. There are three common harvesting methods used in Canada. These are selection, clear cutting, and shelter wood. Different methods are used in different forest types. The goal is to mimic the kind of natural disturbance that would normally occur. The preferred method of harvesting in Northern Ontario is clear cutting. Clear cutting mimics the main natural disturbance in the north, fire. Forest fires are often suppressed to protect people and property, but without human intervention, a fire would naturally take out large areas of forest. Fire removes competing vegetation and provides ideal conditions for northern tree species such as black spruce and jack pine to grow up from seed. The life cycle of a boreal forest depends upon fire. In the absence of fire, clear cutting provides similar large open spaces that the trees need to regenerate. To be honest, uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't look nice, but um, I, I was trying to communicate earlier, it's, um, it's hard to plant trees back in shaded areas because um, things like jack pine and spruce are what they call shade intolerant species. They don't grow well in the shade. They grow best in open sunlight. And in terms of getting the tree species back on the forest that we've, we've harvested and which we're directed to do, that's the only way uh, we can actually have a chance of uh, regenerating the forest back to what it was. In southern Ontario, deciduous forests are usually disturbed by small wind throw events that create gaps within the forest. These gaps allow understory species that were once shaded to take advantage of the new light resources. The selection harvesting system mimics this type of disturbance by taking out certain trees and leaving the rest. So, what are some challenges that the forest industry in Ontario faces? Over the past few years, the forest product industry has faced some hard times because there's been a change in the demand. However, new products and technologies are bringing great opportunities to Ontario's forest industry. The forest industry in Ontario and Canada has a promising future.